Hi guys, uh, Gigi here. Today we are going to take a look at uh, BMW HSR unit. Um, I tried to find what exactly that means and I couldn't, but I will tell you what it is. It's uh, a small, yeah, a small, depends on how you look at it, uh, actuator motor electric motor uh, that's uh, installed on some bmw 5 and 7 series uh, on the rear axle and it will act um, as a steering rack for the rear axle so when you turn the wheel to the left the wheels in the in the rear will also react and, and turn a little bit to the right so when you are cornering uh, you are uh, going to use also the, the rear uh, uh, wheels to turn. Uh, this improves um, uh, maneuverability and steering and uh, actually um, it works pretty good at uh, high speeds. Many BMWs uh, that are getting older now have uh, started to have problems with uh, these uh, actuators with these electric motors in, in the rear axle and they tend to get defective, uh, give errors and all kind of stuff and when that one goes uh, into, the, into, into error mode uh, your front wheels will also act strange or your steering wheel because uh, when you drive to the left or right um, the active steering in the front will uh, be connected to the active string in the in the rear and sometimes if the rear actuator uh, fails uh, you can end up with the steering wheel turned uh, 90 degrees to the left or uh, right on sitting in the wrong position even if the wheels are going straight so i've started having uh, this kind of issues with uh, my bmw and i was looking to replace this actuator the price for the actuator it's quite high at the BMW dealer. Um, you can find some used ones that are actually also pretty expensive, starting from 500, 600 uh, euros here in, in Europe. Maybe you can find them cheaper in the US. I don't know. Uh, and I decided to try to fix this actuator. So today I'm going to show you uh, what usually goes wrong with them and how you can uh, fix this uh, this problem so this is the actuator I was talking about this is installed on the rear subframe uh, with three screws here and there is a support on the rear subframe um, what I ended up doing was buying one extra unit because I had to drive with the car and uh, I could not uh, just leave it without it so um, this are this is going to be connected on the on uh, on rear arms and this part will go in and out and move the rear wheels with uh, about 80 degrees uh, 80 degrees that's maximum and minimum uh, i have here you have here the power connector here is the power connector here we have a sensor and here we have one more sensor now, in order to uh, uh, split this up and have it open, you will have to remove this screw here and in the other side there is the same screw. Now, um, it's very hard to, to remove this screw and in order to remove this screw, I would recommend first of all to uh, disconnect the sensors here these two screws hex bolts take it out and these two screws and take this out um, under this here you yeah it's a bit a little bit more complicated because when you're going to take this screw out this will tend to turn this way or that way or whatever when you turn this one and turn this one too, here you have a piece of, 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 of plastic um, with a magnet on it that will um, 
be red on this sensor. When you turn this one, this piece of plastic will tend to break. So now, now just for demonstration purposes, uh, this is the piece I have right here. You know, this is from the other one. And you will have this small plastic with a magnet on top that will go in this hole here. So this sitting in the hole here, like you see here, and the sensor on the top. And it will read the movement of this magnet here, so it knows how much it turned left or right. Now, if you don't take the screws out from here, you will press on this plastic, which is held by a, a screw here, and it will break. It will, uh, you will crack this piece. Uh, if you know it's already broken, you cannot use it anymore, yeah, well, do it. If not, uh, remove first the sensor, remove the, the, the plastic with the magnet, and then open the ends. Now, after you remove the ends here, uh, you have some uh, protection rubbers uh, here and here. Remove the clamps, take them out. This will come out. This end will, will come out this side and this end will come out out here uh, after you took out the, the the ends you have some screws here it's uh, yeah we call them umbraco uh, it's a hex head four screws here and the same on the other end these are smaller so um, after you take the whole thing you take them apart you can watch inside it and I will show you what's inside because I have that one open. So I took all the screws out and all the ends and everything came out. So this is here and you take it out. So this is here. You take it out, take your rubber, uh, take these screws out and then you take this piece out of here. Uh, when it when you take it out, in the end there will be a plastic bushing. So this is important because this is the part that breaks. This and the one under the sensor. So this here, it was intact, it was okay. And here we have the part with the, with the sensor. So now, when you remove the sensor, you will see what I was talking about. So this we have to remove before we take out the ends. So this we remove, you take it out, take the screw out and then wiggle it out, it will come. And then you can take this piece out. Okay. For me it will come a little bit easier because I've done this previously. It's one screw with a hex head. take it out and put it aside and then find a small flat screwdriver to take this this out and this one is out uh, mine I could see it started to crack here all the way and under this is actually okay for now it can be reused I glued it together but you don't know how long it will hold and do not lose this small magnet, it's very important. Put it aside, now you take this out. Good. Well, when I took mine out first time, I could see here it was a lot of dirt and rust. And so the other bushing didn't want to come out. I tried and I tried and I tried and is I broke it out. And we can see what happened here. A lot of water ingress. And it pressed on the bushing and it pressed on the on the shaft. And it could not move in and out. So now I'm going to clean this really, 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 really good. Um, and I'm going to see if I can order a new one. If not, fabricate a new one. And then we see what's gonna happen
and oxidation and whatever you want and uh, the problem was that was getting stuck uh, and the bushing the plastic bushing was cracked as you can see it was in pieces and it was always hanging so always when it tried to go back into its initial position the, the it it will hang and it will feel that it has a resistance and it will come with a, with an error um, if we want to take a look inside we have to take the axle this way out I have a big uh, ball bearing here I can see there is a clip that holds it in, in place so I assume it's safe to bang it out this this way do not hit with the with the, with the hammer do not hit with the with the metal hammer just take a plastic hammer and hit it that way uh, as you can see inside there is the stator and this is the rotor this will will turn and when it turns you can see it's coming out or going in so let me show you how this thing works so if I rotate the axe you can see it's moving inwards here you can see the distance okay when it's in the car it will not be the axe itself that moves it will be the rotor so this moves and it will push the wheels left or right you can see the stator with the coils here we have a sensor um, this one I think it's measuring the speed how fast this thing turns um, and we have another sensor that it's located here on the axle you see it hold and it's sitting here with a small magnet and on the outside on the outside we have a sensor you can see this sensor measures the distance how much this axe moves in or out so this is the sensor that it measures the distance so it knows if it will go one degree two degrees three degrees uh, left and right so this is how the wheels are moved so this guy it turns turns, turns and it moves the wheel left or right in this case I can turn it here but normally I can't so it will turn uh, the magnet will turn inside and and slide it so now I have to bang it out from this side You will see it starting to come out. Just go easy because here you have some magnet, a magnetic wheel that feeds signal to this sensor up here. So now the bearing is out, you can easy just pull it up. And here we have the rotor so you can see this part is only moving can you see the inside so when this actually works correctly it's the rotor that turns comes here and in the other way because this cannot move left or right because here we have the the plastic sensor with the with the magnet so this has to be stay fixed because it's clamped inside here so it doesn't have to turn but this part will turn and then move the axle in and out left or right I have here this is a uh, another small uh, magnet magnetic wheel that feeds the one sensor here this one I'll take a screwdriver so 
where the hell is the camera yeah, yeah. so this is the sensor and the magnetic well will fill it I've measured everything here it's all right uh, I have power uh, if I feed it power it will turn so everything it's it's if I feed power through the through the power connector I get power feed on this one and uh, the rotor will will turn so on the electric part there's nothing wrong with it um, so mostly it will get stuck because of the the yeah the rust and, and, and uh, all that things that will gather here because water uh, got in and I presume I'm not exactly sure but this it's on the rear right wheel and I guess because we always go over bumps on the right when you park the car when you go over a, a, um, a bump on the right the wheel will get a shock from 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 this side so when you turn they, they, they will be like this when you turn this way and then they hit, get a hit and then it will, it will hit here and press on the on the plastic bushing and it will break because uh, right now it became brittle and it breaks very easy now what we have done to uh, put this back together to make it working we have made the plastic bushings and the little magnetic support so we have printed this in a very solid material we've printed about I don't know 30 pieces of this different sizes different uh, uh, measuring inside and outside with the cut hole here like you see the original you know the original has a, a, a cut hole here with the perturbation inside uh, I will put some pictures of the of the 3d designs and this one also has so we tried about 30 pieces of, of different type of material different ty uh, measurements uh, black material uh, this gray one uh, smaller bigger just to make a perfect fit because when you put this here it will have to slide you see sliding perfectly but we have to take in consideration that it's also sitting inside here so when you put it here it has to fit perfectly and should be able to move freely and it is now <coughs> before you reassemble everything clean everything very very good before you put the bushings inside when you put it in it will click it has to click because it will catch on the inside uh, it's very hard to, to, to show you and to focus but it has a small indentation here that will catch on the other side so it doesn't glide outside of the hole and these are the magnetic supports we made printed and tested and different materials again and shapes and, and cut to, to, to position um, we are going to start selling these kits uh, the bushings and the support and everything so you can fix your own uh, actuator it might need a little bit of, of uh, filling on the on the edges and on the outsides uh, to make a perfect fit with uh, with your uh, but okay here it's a little bit tight but when you put it in it should slide very easy if your aluminium body is it's clean correctly okay so I put this one in I put that one in and now we are going to start assembling now to the assembling part so as I told you we've tried different sizes and different materials and, and all that um, 
when you put it back look here's the big hole but the big bearing cannot go in here it can only go inside here in the housing so it will go inside and be stopped by this here so what you want to do is put it in nice and slowly so you don't break so you what you want to do is take it and put it in very slowly and when you reach it here just take the rubber hammer and hammer it in it will stop by itself I can hit tick tick metal on metal it's at the end it stopped it's where it should be now um, before you put the end caps and, and everything back together we put the plastic bushings we need to use some PTFE uh, it's it's grease with PTFE it's white and you want to put it first I could see there was some of it here I should have put it when it was outside but no it's okay because this part will slide in or out and it needs PTFE uh, you can just take it out from here and get it to get it to slide in okay and you would do the same on this because it has to glide perfectly I'm not going to fully assemble this because I lost a piece <laughs> and I will have to take it from from the other one or just put that one back um, in the end so remember where you have the hole it has to be in the end where you have the space for the magnet so this has to slide inside here and on the same I have a metal ring that it fits here it should stay there inside let's see if I can yeah that should hold the ball bearing place and you have a little cut here it has to align with the cut here uh, I can see a small cut here so you will align this and you have a, an o-ring here I will put some grease on, 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 on the o-ring too This is where the water came in. And I look at the cut. And I look at the cut on this side and align and should go in smooth. And it does. Now, when you've done this, when you put everything here back together and it's aligned, look for the hole here it's not here right yet so we turn this until it goes in a lot more 
and align it so we can put the screw in. So it's aligned there and now I can put my my uh, magnet support inside with the little uh, prolongation inside so it has to go with the magnet towards the, the rotor you put it in it should just click in its place and then put the screw I will just have to clean my hands a little bit the screw fits perfect tight it's in and now you can get the sensor clean it uh, it has it has some silicone here so if you have some some silicone just put it but just do it very very thin layer so it doesn't glue on the magnet so this has to come here back then this will go here this has a rubber tool you can give it a little bit of of grease uh, this has no alignment point but It has to go with the hole for the support down and center it and you can just push it in with, with the hammer just slowly up and down and all the places until it goes in. I have it in and you can just rotate and bring it where you want. Okay, we assemble this one. Now you put your screws and the rubbers and then the end. Well, um, this is the one part I forgot on mine. So when you take it out, just make some signs and check where it is the alignment. So it has to be like this with, with this part up. So you put it like this and it has to stay in this position. Let me see if there is no marking. Nope, there is no marking inside. There's no marking outside so when you put this together make sure make sure you align perfectly the one on the left with the one on the right so these two pieces have to be perfectly aligned when you put them back This comes like this, and this comes like this. So when, when you put them back, make sure they are aligned before you put the screws and, and hit it in. So this doesn't have to move anymore. This cannot move anymore. So this has to be aligned perfectly with this one. Um, how you could do it? I <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you could do it like this on the table and then on the table yeah you could before you you dismantle you could make some markings you know along uh, just put something and just draw a line take a yeah straight piece of, of, of something and just make an alignment just say this is, is my is my line and then align it like like that 
because else I don't know how you you will be able to align that one. And uh, after that, the installation should be complete for 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 the HSR. Now, one more important thing. So the one more important thing, this is the support. I will take the one that's complete. This is the support that's on the rear frame that will hold this piece in. If you don't want to make wheel alignment again after you finish with this operation, what I suggest you to do is make some markings or make something so you are 100% sure this does not come into other position because this is moving the, the rear wheels so if this is more to the left or more to the right when you when you install it up uh, it will affect your uh, your uh, steering angle and you will have to make wheel alignment again so when you take it down before you remove these screws here make sure you make some markings where you, where your screws were or mark it here up it's i think it's way better just mark it here you know this has to be here uh, this has to be here and yeah make a few markings make a few markings with with the paint or or whatever uh, if you feel more comfortable just put the line and then just make it make three or four lines so you know know for sure that when you put it back you will after you take out the screws it will align perfectly so this sits like this in the car and when you take it out You only have to take this to remove it you only have to take this screw out this one and this one here and then of course the rear arms that are held in, in in this one these ones are fixed so don't worry about these ones the hole here it's pretty much uh, the same size as the bolt and uh, in the arm so this will not move so when you take this out it will never move So, um, that should be it guys, uh, for today, um, and uh, I will uh, install, uh, after I put it back, I will install it on the car and let you know how it went. So we installed it on the, on the car, uh, we made the test. Uh, HSR test uh, you can find that in, in Ista I just simply had no time to, to also uh, record that one uh, the HSR moves left and right no problems um, and uh, I went uh, to make a wheel alignment just to make one to be 100% sure that nothing messed up uh, and the angle was perfect I had I didn't need to adjust it so if you make your markings and everything uh, is 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 all right uh, it should work perfectly of course if you want to buy a used uh, used unit like this uh, you can buy it and just install it in the car and it should work plug and play don't need to make nothing if you change the box for the HSR for the active steering in the rear yes you will have to uh, code that to the car and, uh, and make some, some, some small things now usually when you when you buy one like this from uh, from uh, from eBay or yeah parts dealer or whatever if it's if it's not new it will come with the support and it will come into the support 
so it will come like this into the into the support um, when it comes with the support just take your own with the support out and put the one you got back with its support do not take out the screws uh, and it will work plug and play you will not need to make uh, the uh, wheel adjustment because these are um, if you think about it this unit is fixed it cannot be longer on this or longer on that so when you put it up it will be in the same place also the the frame support it should be the same um, you have a uh, you have a procedure in ISTA for centering the the HSR and it will just center itself and you should be good to go with the with the used unit we are going to start uh, as I said we are going to start selling this uh, these kits um, with of course with the with uh, the plastic uh, things to hold the, the the magnet because in 95% of the cases that's the problem on on, on these cars uh, water ingress uh, and then it will uh, have to use too much force to move the wheels uh, left and right and it will hang and you will get uh, these kind of errors uh, thanks for watching guys uh, until next time see you if you like it subscribe uh, leave me a comment on what I've done right what I've done wrong how you would have done it and uh, yeah, let me know. Thanks. Bye, guys.